My brothers and sisters, it is important that we become conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we obey Him in a way that draws us closer to His paradise. And we stay away from His prohibitions in a way that will drive us further away from hellfire. It is important that we constantly remind ourselves that we are going to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For indeed, that reminder is what will keep us on track. It is something that will distance us from the distractions that we find within this worldly life. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us in every single way. It is our duty, my brothers and sisters, to make an effort to learn this beautiful deen, this religion. And it is our duty to put it into practice and to convey it to others as best as we can. To convey it through our actions as well as words, as well as other beautiful ways, in order to be able to ensure that this goodness travels as much as possible. It is important for us to take this very seriously. Brothers and sisters, bearing that in mind, there is a beautiful narration that appears in Sahih Muslim that I would like to share with you today. It is a narration that is reported by Tamim Ad-Dari radiallahu an, who is a companion of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it is a narration that is considered a quarter of the deen, the religion, a quarter of it. Some of the scholars have said is just this narration because it has in it something very, very important. So much so that in Nawawi, rahimahullah, has said quite clearly that perhaps this could encapsulate the entire deen, the entire religion in this one beautiful narration. So what is the narration? It is a common hadith where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, Ad-deenun nasiha. And these wordings cannot just be translated in the English language, they would require an entire paragraph, perhaps even a booklet to explain. So what is meant by Ad-Deenun Nasiha and how does that particular narration continue? It would mean that this religion is based on something known as an nasiha If I were to ask you what is an nasiha many of us would say it is to someone genuinely. The truth is, that is not the only meaning of it. It is only a small portion of it. If we were to look at the hadith a little bit further up, we would find that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked, Liman ya Rasulullah? For whom should this nasiha be? And he started off by saying it should be for Allah. That is the first point, for Allah. And he continues, we shall continue in a few moments inshallah. But if you take a look at that, if it is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it cannot mean advice. It cannot mean that we need to tell Allah something or we need to explain ourselves or astaghfirullah, correct and so on. So it means there is a deeper meaning to this word an nasiha To start off with, it means to be true, to be sincere, to be full of love towards so you are true to Allah, you are sincere to Allah, you are full of love towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once that happens, everything you are supposed to be fulfilling towards Allah will be fulfilled. That is known as an nasiha That is known as an nasiha So when we say ad nasiha we would translate it as this religion is based on genuineness, sincerity, truthfulness and love. Subhanallah. Genuineness, sincerity truthfulness and love. This is what the religion is based upon. So you need to be genuine towards Allah. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continues to say, Lillahi wa li rasoolihi aw lillahi wa li kitabihi wa li rasoolihi wa li a'immatil muslimina wa ammatihim. Five categories of people that you need to be genuine towards. You need to be truthful towards. You need to be sincere towards. And you need to be loving towards. Five categories. One of them is not a person. It is actually the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning the Quran. So you are sincere towards it. You love it. You are true to it. And at the same time, you are a genuine person towards that beautiful Quran of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the message. And this is what we shall be speaking about inshallah. But before I say anything further, I'd like to draw your attention to the condition of your heart and mind right now. In order to be able to benefit from the words of Allah 
subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we need to remove any malice, jealousy, hatred, ill feeling from our hearts that we may have for our fellow brethren. It is important because if we have that, it is a rust on the heart that will deny entry of the good teachings of Islam into our hearts. We will think we are learning something good, but we won't realize because of the condition of but we have actually not benefited. So let's take a moment to look into our hearts, to learn to reach out to people, to forgive people, to learn to remove bad qualities from our hearts. Primarily, we should be worshipping Allah and Allah. And we should try our best to follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is impossible if we do not have knowledge. And knowledge, it will be impossible to achieve it if we do not make an effort. So we need to make an effort, we need to be sincere, and we need to learn, and then we will be able to put into practice, and we will be able to clean our hearts. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us, and may He make us from those whose hearts are clean in such a way that when we meet Him, He is pleased with us and grants us paradise without even reckoning, for there will be people whom that will happen to. May we be from amongst them. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let's take a look at this genuineness towards Allah. Are you really true to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If you are, you would find that you worship none but Allah. That is the first point. We do not associate partners with Allah. We do not worship trees or sticks or stones or graves or other people. We may respect them. To Allah, we call out in dua to Allah and Allah alone, and we ensure that whatever act of worship we engage in, it is for Allah. When we are in desperate need, we call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is important for us to know you are sick, that is a test for you to see what do you do about it. Do you call out to others besides Allah that which is prohibited in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just because you want to get better? If you are ill, if something has happened to you or your child, or you are fearful, it is Allah who put the fear in. Like he says, He says, we will definitely test you. Allah says, we will definitely test you with some of the following. So he makes mention of fear. Khawf. He makes mention of ju'a, which is hunger. And he makes mention of lack or loss of wealth and produce. These are all part of the tests of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us. Why? In order to see what do you do when you don't have. What do you do when things do not go according to your liking? Do you do that which is prohibited in order to earn or in order to benefit yourself? Or do you stick to the law of Allah? That is when you will be true to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you know the sickness I have is from Allah. He is the one who made me sick and he is the one who will cure me. Yes, through that which is permissible, you will go to the doctor. Perhaps you will achieve medication, whether it is herbal or whether it is the conventional, whatever it is. But... For as long as it is within that which Allah has permitted. The minute we end up going to someone who's a fortune teller or a person who claims to know the unseen and we start listening to them, we have already started dwindling. We are no longer genuine to Allah. We are not true to Allah. We have lost sincerity to Allah. Where is the nasiha? The hadith says this whole deen is based on what is known as nasiha and that is the genuine feeling, the love of Allah, the sincerity to Allah. Where is it? When Allah tests us, we quickly run away. May that never happen to us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be with us at all times. So my brothers and sisters, that is the genuineness towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Worship Him alone and ensure that we convey that message to others as best as possible. Look at how He starts. He starts by saying this genuineness is beginning with the genuineness towards Allah. The love towards Allah. If you have true love towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will automatically lead you to love His word, His kalam. What is His kalam? The book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Qur'an. And this is why the next point that is made mention of in the same narration, Wali Kitabihi. And you need to be true to the book of Allah. What is it? We all say that this, this is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many of us take a moment to recite it? How many of us take a moment to recite it 
and how many of us have covered its recitation cover to cover, completed. And how often does that happen when the hadith says the best of you are those who complete the Quran and start it again. Every time you read it, you will pick up more and more benefit. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with his word. The word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the manual that I have been given in order to know why I was created. If you think about it, we were created to be tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is why we age, that is why we become old. People when they come into the world, they have nothing. When they leave the world, they have nothing. We always say, the wealth you have, it will not benefit you as it is, but how you use it, is what will go with you when you die. It becomes a deed. It is no longer just money. It becomes an action. But if you have left your wealth, it's going to remain behind when you go. You go alone. You are enshrouded. You don't have your clothing on. Everything you had in the world is gone. Your family is gone. Everything else is gone. Your wealth is gone. The only thing that comes with you, your deeds. What are deeds? When you convert your energy into actions, it becomes a deed. When you convert your money into an act of worship, it becomes a deed. But if you just kept it and you held it, there was nothing grand about what you had. This is why we say, when Allah has given you the strength, use it. When you converted your free time into a good deed, it becomes an action. And this is what you take. This is why the hadith says, seize the five opportunities before they are overtaken by five conditions. When you have free time, when you have health, when you are alive, when you are young and so on, you need to make sure that you convert all that into deeds that can come with you the day that your books shall be closed. Your examination is over. Now you have to hand in your papers and that's it. This is Allah. So how do we know how to lead our lives? Well, Allah sent a word. Allah sent a book. It is his own word, his own kalam. We believe it is kalamullahi azza wa jal. It is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the one who made you has given you a word. Have you read it? I started off by saying reciting. This would mean reading in the Arabic language. Some of us do not understand it. It is still important to recite it in the Arabic language, even though you don't understand it. But you have another duty towards the Quran. You need to be true to the Quran by trying to learn its meanings. Let's be honest. How many of us are really true to the Quran by learning the meanings of the Quran cover to cover? How old are you? Ask yourself. I am so old, but have you ever covered the entire Quran in its meaning? Understanding the whole plan of Allah and why he's got you in this dunya. Understanding that plan. Have you even read his word once from cover to cover? Understanding it in your language? The answer is probably no for the majority of us. And I know what I'm talking about. May Allah forgive us. So how can we say an nasihatu li kitabillah? How can we say I am true to the word of Allah? I love the word of Allah. I am genuine to the word of Allah. I am sincere to the word of Allah. When I have not made an effort to try and understand the word of Allah, the tafsir lesson takes place in the masjid. I am the first one to walk out. I don't even come for that tafsir lesson. Let alone the tafsir lesson, I am not even here for salah. Let alone not coming to the masjid for salah. I don't even perform my salah. I don't even fulfill it. If that is the case, there is much to be corrected. My brothers and sisters, seize this opportunity today to turn to Allah. Promise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you will do better. You don't know how long you're going to live. This test is going to come to an end. One day you will be regretting or you will be appreciating what you have done. Let's be from amongst those who appreciate. We ask Allah's mercy and we ask Allah to strengthen us when it comes to good deeds and to make us weak when it comes to bad deeds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create a barrier between us and bad deeds and may he make us energetic when it comes to do that which is good. I mean. My brothers and sisters, be true to the word of Allah. Be true to the book of Allah. It is here. It will bear witness for you or against you. al quran hujjatun laka aw alayk. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, this book is going to bear witness for you or against you. How many of us, we have so many beautiful masahif in our houses. These Qur'ans, they are sitting in the houses. We haven't even read them. They are collecting dust and we don't even know the meanings and we've never made an effort to look through the meanings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Brothers and sisters, we are quick. If there was a business deal for a thousand riyal or ten thousand dollars and what have you, we are quick to rush towards it. What about your entire akhirah, your entire life after death? All you need to do is understand the message of Allah and live by it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you shall succeed. 
May Allah grant us that. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to be genuine towards his book. And if we are genuine to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need a good reminder. And that reminder is, today, there are some people who say, this is the book of Allah, and that's it. I don't follow anything besides the Quran. If that is the case, they are not even following the Quran because the Quran is what leads you to the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So those who are saying we do not accept the hadith and we do not accept the sunnah, they are not really following the Quran itself. قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهِ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ Say, if you really love Allah, then follow me. Where is this verse? It's in the Quran. So if the people are following the Quran and they really love Allah, they would follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The instruction of following Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is in the Quran in more than one place. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُوا وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ That which the messenger has given you, follow it. And that which he has prohibited, consider it prohibited. Do not engage in it. Where is this verse? It is in the Quran. So if someone is following the Quran and they love the Quran and they are sincere to the book of Allah, they will automatically become sincere to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by adopting his sunnah. And this brings us to the third point mentioned in this hadith. وَلِرَسُولِهِ الدِّينُ النَّصِيحَةِ قُلْنَا لِمَنْ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ قَالَ لِلَّهِ وَلِكِتَابِهِ وَلِرَسُولِهِ this is the third point we are making mention of. You need to be genuine towards Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You need to love him. You need to be sincere towards him. How am I truthful to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? By learning what he has brought, by believing he is the messenger, by believing he is the final messenger, by believing he is the highest of all the messengers, by believing he is the best of creation, and at the same time, making an effort to learn his words, to read what his life was all about, something known as the seerah and something known as the hadith. The seerah is his lifetime. The hadith are all his sayings and all his... The, his sayings, his statements, and his movements are also mentioned in the hadith of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That which he agreed upon, even by the movement of his head, is considered hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How many of us have read a biography of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's life from the time pre-birth right up to the time when Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu took over? How many of us have actually read in depth what occurred? Today, it is quite easy. If you are lazy to read, you have a CD. If you are lazy for a CD, you have the internet and you have YouTube, subhanAllah. Ask the scholars in your midst what is beneficial for us from this particular internet and inshallah, they will guide you to what to listen to. But the problem with us, we don't even have time for that. So much so that today, whilst you are driving, you can put in a CD and listen. But even that, some of us, na'udhu billah, we prefer to listen to music that is prohibited. And we prefer to listen to that which would not result in any benefit to us. Yet you go to work every day and you come back and there are long hours sometimes you are in your vehicle. Make use of it. Be true to Allah. Be true to his book. Be true to his messenger. And you will find the love will emulate and emanate from your heart in such a beautiful way that people will see it in your face. You will be the most content person because you know why you are in the world. The most content from amongst us are those who know why they are here. Do you know that? The most happy from amongst us, they could be sick, they could be ill, they could be poor, they could be people who really no one looks towards, but they will be the most happy, they will be the happiest, the most content if they just know why they are here. That's all. So this is why Allah makes it very clear in the Quran and in several places why he has brought us into this world. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has explained it too. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created mankind or jinn kind except that they worship me. And this would mean that we have been primarily created just to be tested by Allah for a few years. You came into the world, you could not speak. You were taught how to speak. You were dressed. You were taught so many things. And you had to find Allah, worship Allah alone and continue worshiping Allah. And he would put obstacles in your life just to test you. You pass those obstacles, then he takes you away. And when he takes you away, you've either passed or failed. May he make us from amongst those who've passed. This is life. It is very, very short, extremely short. Before 
before you know it, you will be old. You may not be able to walk. Before you know it, you will be in your grave. But what would have happened? A lot of us come into the test and we think that this is eternal life. So we begin to lead our lives in a way that we transgress against Allah's commands until the day comes when we die and we realize what did I really achieve and what have I prepared for, for the journey from now on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. So let's be truthful to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Following his sunnah as best as possible. Following his sunnah would only be possible if we learn it. Many people don't know what is the sunnah. We do not insult Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you really love him and if you are truthful to him, you would know that his mission and he was sent to teach us how to worship Allah. So dare us. How dare we engage in an act of worship that he has not instructed and not permitted his job was to teach us how to worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we believe he did his job well Ashhadu annaka qad risalata. it would mean i bear witness that you O muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have fulfilled the message you have conveyed that message to us so if we believe he conveyed the message what was the message the message was how to worship Allah. He gave it to us and he went away. That's all. He came, he taught us how to worship Allah and he went away. So how dare we engage in acts of worship that he did not teach. And this is the term bid'ah that is used. The innovations that are used. A person who engages in innovations is not true to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is a problem with his love for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is a problem with his sincerity to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is a problem with his truthfulness and genuineness and so on. Because there is no nasiha to towards Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam if a person has not fulfilled the acts of worship that have been taught by him or if a person has engaged in that which he has not taught or that which he has prohibited. This is why, let us learn. When I want to do something, ask, let, let me ask myself, was this taught by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? If it was not or if it was prohibited, believe me, stay away from it. You will be a person who is more deserving of the reciprocal love. What is the meaning of reciprocal love? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who loves him. Subhanallah. So you want the love of Allah, you follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What will you get in return? The verse I read, you will get the love of Allah in return and you will get forgiveness. That's what Allah says. So do you want the reciprocal love? If you want it, follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Simple message in the Quran. May Allah strengthen us. My brothers and sisters, it is not easy because in this entire life, shaitan will come to us every single day. That is our test. That is the reason why we are here, to fight the devil all the way to the end. And he will come and try and distract us every day. And every day we should end the day by saying, Alhamdulillah, I passed for the sake of Allah. And Alhamdulillah, I managed to protect myself against, against shaitan. And this would only be possible by the help of Allah. This is why every morning, every evening, we are taught to read what is known as the Mu'awwidat. Do you know what the meaning of Mu'awwidat is? Those last two surahs of the Quran in which there are verses that would result in your protection against the devil and against so many other things. It would protect you by the help of Allah. The reason is we are human beings, but we are weak. We need the help of Allah. So may Allah help us to protect us from the devil. May Allah protect us from shaitan. And may he make us from those who understand the plot of the devil. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. My brothers and sisters, let's move on this beautiful hadith where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then says, Wali a'immatil muslimin. You need to be sincere towards whom? Those who are known as a'imma. A'imma divided into two categories. One, the rulers and two, the scholars. The rulers and the scholars, we need to love them. We need to obey them. We need to make sure that we speak good about them. We need to make sure that we support them in the good cause. We need to understand that to create that which would cause instability is prohibited. To create that or to, to do something that would result in loss of security or stability in your nation is actually prohibited. To cause a disaster, to disunite people is prohibited. All this falls under being sincere towards your rulers. You need to be thankful for what they've done for you. You need to be looking into it and be thankful, be full of gratitude. What have they done? What are they doing? Let me support the cause. Let me be sincere and genuine and let me spread a good word, even the scholars of Islam. You can benefit, you benefit from them. 
And you need to know, spread a good word. When there is a good word that is spread by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will be able to benefit and we will be able to benefit others as well. And we support those who are doing good from amongst us. If there is someone who has made an error, for example, there is a way of correcting them. May Allah make it easy for us. We move to the last part of the beautiful hadith. Allah says, or Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, وَلِعَامَّتِهِمْ أَئِمَّةِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَعَامَّتِهِمْ Ammatihim means the general masses, the general public. It is important to love them, to be sincere towards them. It is important to be true to them. And in this instance, that term advice would also come into the meaning. Which means, if you see them going wrong, your genuineness would make you help them come back to the right path, but in a beautiful way. In order to achieve that, you need to have what is known as ikhlas. You need to be sincere. You need to have knowledge. You need to be kind, you need to know what you are calling them towards, and you need to have wisdom in your approach. If I see you doing something wrong, or you see me doing something wrong, if I really love you, I will in private come and correct you. I will in private advise you, and I will pray for you, and I will really feel for you, and I make sure that I believe in the hadith where Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه None of you are true believers until you love for your brother what you love for yourself. And what this would mean is, I would not love for myself to be exposed where my weaknesses are concerned. Same way I should not want the weaknesses of others to be exposed. So I should get to them and tell them in a beautiful way, my brother, do you know what? This is what I feel and so on. And they might have a statement to make because I could have been wrong. But the genuineness and the love between us is not lost. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and protect us. This is why I said a few moments ago, when you want to correct someone, there is a method of doing it. There is an Islamic method of doing it. There is an Islamic method of doing it. Al-Fudayl ibn Iyad, rahimahullah, he used to say that if a person has corrected someone in private, he is sincere and he, he is full of love for that person. But if a person has exposed another's weaknesses, he is a hypocrite. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from hypocrisy. My brothers and sisters, we love one another for the sake of Allah. As I close, I want to ask you a question. Ask yourself, do you love those sitting around you, even though you don't know them, even though they are belonging to different nationalities, even though they have different levels of wealth and so on? Do you love those who are around you? If you don't feel the love, today is the day. Correct it. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, we have a connection. What is the connection? We share the shahada. We share the faith. And that itself should be enough for us to love one another, to feel that genuineness. When you see someone doing something wrong, instead of hating the individual, we are taught to hate the deed in a way that we still want the brother, but we just want him and to help him to eradicate that particular deed. This is the beauty of Islam. Every one of us has weaknesses. Nobody here is perfect. And this is why we go back to the hadith. A this religion is based on love. It is based on sincerity. It is based on truthfulness and genuineness towards Allah, towards the book, towards Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as the messenger, towards the rulers and the, and the scholars and towards the general masses. Are we really fulfilling this? If we do, now you can understand why it is said this is one of the most important ahadith that is narrated in Sahih Muslim by Tamim al-Dari radiallahu an. It is so important because it covers every single aspect of our lives. My beloved brothers and sisters, very soon you shall return to Allah, so prepare for that day. Very soon you shall return to Allah, so amass good deeds. Very soon you shall return to Allah, so seek forgiveness of Allah. Very soon you shall be alone in your grave, so prepare for that day. Very soon you shall be meeting with your maker and he shall take account of your deeds, so seek plenty forgiveness. Very soon you shall be in the akhirah, in the life after that is eternal. So do not be deceived by this temporary life that will last only a few moments. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us all. My beloved brothers and sisters, we have been instructed to send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wherein he says inna allaha wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma fasalli wa sallim wa barik wa an'im ala abdika wa rasulika muhammadin afdali al-khalq afdali al-khalq wa akram al-rusuli wardallahumma an khulafaihi al-rashidin al-a'immati al-mahdiyin abi bakrin wa umara wa uthman wa ali Allahumma ardu anhum wa ansair al-sahabati wa al-tabi'in wa anna ma'ahum bimannika wa karamika ya akram al-akramin Allahumma a'izz al-islam wa al-muslimin Allahumma aminna fi awtanina wa aslih a'immatana wa ulaat أمورنا واجعل ولايتنا في من خافك واتقاك واتبع رضاك يا رب العالمين اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين 
اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم آمنا في أوطاننا اللهم ادفع عنا الغلا والوبا والربا والزنا والزلازل والمحن وسوء الفتن ما ظهر منها وما بطن اللهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم انصر إخواننا المظلومين في كل مكان اللهم انصرهم أينما كانوا يا قوي يا عزيز يا جبار السماوات والأراضين يا صاحب كل نجوى ويا منتهى كل شكوى اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين وارحم موتا وموت المسلمين اللهم احفظ هذه البلاد اللهم احفظ هذه البلاد وسائر بلاد المسلمين اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى اللهم ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم